It's the first time I've gotten my S4 up into uh, twisties, uh, aside from my test drive. It's pretty fun. Put it into um, paddle shift mode. It's got a sequential gearbox, so it shifts very quickly. And uh, it's got a lot of power, so it's kind of fun. And now I'm stuck behind some cars, so back out of sequential paddle shifting and back to just chilling. All right, I found a nice little landscape scene. Um, we had snow a while ago. It's mostly melted in places where humans normally travel, roads and so forth. But away from the roads, and on the trails and so forth, and I'm not way off, I mean, here's a road. <laughs> uh, I'm not way out in the wilderness here. Uh, I'm just outside of Evergreen, really just outside of Kittredge, in a little park with a nice stream running through it. And I thought I would have a look around and as it turns out, there's a, a real cute, maybe trite landscape scene down here uh, with a mill on the stream with the snow surrounding the creek, creek meandering past the mill. The shot has probably been taken two million times, but I'll be two million and one. Uh, just for the fun of getting out here and shooting, if nothing else. I've got the Chamonix with me, and my usual Chamonix kit this is my, what I would call my lightweight setup. Uh, and I'm only carrying a 75 millimeter and a 180. That 180 is just barely longer than normal. That's probably the lens I'm going to have to use here because the 75 is really pretty wide. Uh, I've walked too far. Maybe not. I've been too busy talking and not paying attention to where I'm walking. So uh, here's the scene. I'm not sure if I have the exposure very, set very well for you to see that on the video. Uh, but I feel like I should be able to do something with this. So I'm going to get set up and see what I can do. This is one case where the backlight is nice because it's zippered on this side. I'm going to throw this thing down in the snow. This way I don't get the back of the backpack wet and then have to put it back on. So that is a nice feature of uh, backloading backpacks. If I was carrying another type of backpack, I would have to uh, put down some kind of dry cloth or just find a better place to uh, lay down my backpack. Okay. So it's snowy here. I don't have any spikes for this tripod. So this is not great. Man, that is ice under there. I think I'm standing I'm standing on ice. Alright. Uh man, I wish I had some spikes. This is goofy. I'll make a little snow wall here. All right. It's pretty dull light. So I got to make sure that my snow doesn't turn out really gray.
as I said, I'm going to use the 180 here. Uh, I'm guessing that's just about the right focal length for this. I may have to move the camera, unfortunately. Okay, I'm all leveled. Double check that the back is tight. It, it's tight, but it's not, it's swung a little bit. So if you've watched my Chamonix review, you know I bitched about this stuff. So anyway, now it's straight. You should always take your lens cap off. Lens is open. The aperture all the way open. That's better. All right. Okay, so that was a pretty good guess uh, with respect to composition. Um, my distance from the subject and the fact that I've got this 180 on here. So that's nice. I have a choice to make between getting the tops of the evergreens in we're getting more of the shapes of the snow. Uh, I'm going to go for the, sh you know, the shapes of the creek and snow over the tops of the evergreens because as I, uh, if I play with the composition by using my rise and fall, uh, I start getting this tree limb running across the image and I don't really love that. So I'm gonna lower the point of view of the thing just by changing my um, rise and fall and uh, get more of the creek and so forth in frame. Now by doing that I'm including more foreground so I'm most likely going to need a little bit of tilt because what's up here is going to be out of focus. Now, I can really stop the lens down like crazy um, but I prefer to do uh, stop down to about 32 or so and do a little bit of shift. So not shift, tilt. So that's what I'm going to look at. Helps to have a loop to do that. This is a Schneider loop. This thing is insanely good. Now I just need to find the controls that let me actually tilt. So uh, those of you who've seen my review on this camera, uh, you know that I bitched about the fact that it was easy to throw the camera's tilt off when you were manipulating the lens. Uh, a kind viewer wrote me and explained that there are actually a couple of locks here. Uh, I'll try to show them in a piece of B-roll, but I've just released those locks. That lets me do the tilt.
Okay, so to do the tilt, I just sort of seesawed back and forth, focusing uh, far and then checking my close focus as I tilted, checking my far or refocusing on the far. Um, so I've got the far very much in focus. I've got the uh, foreground pretty much in focus. I'm going to deal with the rest of my focus issue just by stopping down a lot. Okay, that's F32. It's looking pretty good. It's pretty hard to see, but I would say the shot is set up. I'm not going to use a filter for this shot. It's pretty uh, dim out here. The light's really flat. Yellow filter might help on that a bit, but it might also push me into a reciprocity failure zone, and I just don't want to go there. Because the light is super flat, I'm going to just take an incident reading. Okay, my incident reading gives me half a second at F32, just for fun. Okay, so this is where this dummy down here. Um, takes spot reading and uh, means to take an average uh, of high and low reading and completely hoses it and I guess because he is in video talking mode um, it seems to make him an idiot uh, he completely messes it up and uh, on top of messing it up doesn't even pay attention to the fact that the reading is so different to the one that he did uh, with his incident meter. He should have just stuck with the incident meter reading because it was the right one. Uh, so um, he ends up completely overexposing this shot. Uh, estimate of around a stop and a half. Uh, so I had to adjust for that in development. And uh, I did that by uh, subtracting 20% in development time and then an additional 10% and we'll see how things turn out. So I put the shutter on bulb, double check my f-stop. Three seconds, let's hope the sort of double adjustment, me deciding to go up a stop and reciprocity pushing me to three seconds, uh, let's hope that that doesn't give me a crazy overexposure. The light is so, so flat, I don't think it will, and uh, I'll get a lot of shadow detail. Okay, I took one more shot, um, not quite an insurance shot, it was actually uh, a vertical uh, portrait composition. So kind of a combination, let's try another orientation and insurance. <laughs> the light, it's not that late, it's probably about 3 o'clock, let's see. Yeah, 3 o'clock on the dot. Um, but I'm in a bit of a canyon here, so the light is fading. Uh, that next exposure, I decided to go for F45. One thing you got to take into account if you use a tilt is, yeah, you're getting the foreground in focus, but what are you doing to the top of your frame? I made sure the mill was in focus and the foreground was in focus in my first shot. Stopped down to F32, looked good for the mill and the foreground, took the shot, decided to take the vertical shot, at which point it hit me. Uh, I better damn well make sure that um, the stuff above the mill is in focus that's more in, in the background and uh, wide open at 5.6 uh, after 
adjusting tilt to get the foreground in focus and the mill. Sure enough, the trees in the background were out of focus a bit. So on that shot, I stopped down to f45. And that resulted due to slightly less light and, uh, you know, uh, stopping down a stop. That's a five-ish second exposure. So I have, uh, I have a guilty story. <laughs> I, uh, I got the camera all set up and got ready to take the exposure. Started up uh, reciprocity timers, countdown timer. I had the, the shutter in bulb. I uh, just stupidly, instead of holding the bulb down for the whole time, I went click, click and closed it again. So, um, because of the simplicity of large format, I was like, whatever, that was less than a second. I'll just fire the shutter up again and finish the exposure. Nothing really has changed in the scene. It's on a tripod. So, hopefully, uh, it's about a five second total exposure. Hopefully, it turns out. Always making mistakes. Okay, here we are in Lightroom. And uh, this first photo is uh, one I you know, basically a snapshot I took of the scene uh, with my Sony RX100. Uh, as you can see, it was really pretty. It was a really nice day to be out. Uh, what I wanted to point out is that if I zoom in, you see this rake here. Uh, I'm going to zoom in onto the 4x5 photo. Uh, so I just kind of keep the look of this in mind. That's not quite fair because this photo contains a lot more stuff than um, just the barn. Uh, but I just want to, you know, wanted you to see that detail and then look at the 4x5. So moving on, I have a confession to make. I destroyed one of my negatives while I was developing. Uh, I've learned, I thought, to uh, agitate gently when I'm using the Mod 54 holders for 4 by 5 negatives uh, and those fit on a Patterson tank and I think I just was in a hurry which is weird you can't be in a hurry when you're developing film but I was in some kind of a hurry and so I was agitating harder than usual uh, when I'm developing 4 by 5 film so this negative became uh, detached kind of from the holder and I found it stuck to the side of the tank after I poured out the uh, the final wash so unfortunately, it looks like it took a beating probably from the uh, Mod uh, 54 holder. Uh, so there you have it. I could probably clone this and fix it. Um, doesn't seem worth the trouble. I think uh, I like the vertical composition anyway. So let's move on to that one. So uh, this is the, the final result from that. As you can see, the Exposure is fine. Uh, you know, obviously I made some adjustments. For some reason I can't find my original uh, kind of uh, stitched together scan. I have to put air quotes around scan on this. Uh, but um, I used my DSLR scanning technique. I have a video about that. Anyway, it came out, you know, really well. I, I did have to make adjustments to contrast and all that good stuff, but I always have to. So I'm uh, pretty happy with this. Uh, I did manage to get well, let me get out of this two to one here. Let's do one to one. Uh, all the detail close up in the scene. This is right at the bottom of the frame. And up here in the top corner. So uh, it looks pretty good everywhere. So one thing I wanted to point out was, remember the rake from the, uh, the Sony photo. Um, this is at one to one, but let me zoom in here to uh, two to one. If I can manage. Come on. Ah, there we go. So this is two to one. Check it out. You can see the tines. You could count the tines on this rake and then see all this other detail. Too, can't, too bad you can't read the sign. I wonder if uh, you did a giant enlargement, uh, not a scan. I wonder if you could actually read that sign. You might be able to. So, uh, that's the result from that photo. I just wanted to kind of uh, show it and talk about it rather than just show it with some music because this is one of those cases where, um, you know, as you know from watching the video, I hugely overexposed this and uh, the film could take it A and B 
um, partially because I did an adjustment in development to uh, make sure the highlights weren't blown out. So there you have it. Sorry for the long wait between photo videos. Hope you enjoyed this one. I realize it was super long, uh, but I felt the need to kind of demonstrate, um, you know, what the setup was really like uh, with uh, at least the Chamonix 4x5 camera. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.